All right, well, this is a, a different kind of interview for you. Can you just talk to me what you're thinking right now? Um, With the microphone, please. Sorry. See, I even forgot how to use a mic. I was about to get that finish. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I threw that shallow guillotine on him. You know, obviously it's one of my tricks, and I held it, and I held it. And when I felt the ref pulling him off, I was kind of like, oh, damn, he's already asleep. I didn't even start the crank yet. You know, there's two chances to tap. There's, it's suffocating him, and then all I have to do is kind of crank it a little bit, and usually I'm getting just about everyone to tap. So that was really unfortunate. That was... Uh, quite a few months of work, you know. That was about 14 months since I was at Bantamweight. That's the weight class that all you guys wanted me to come into the UFC at. And that's what I can do and I don't even know, what was that, two minutes? Two and a half minutes? Um, yeah, I, I want to run it back. Yeah, I, I think it's the same outcome minus, okay, Keith has a hard job. I'm not even gonna shit on him. I get it, his arm was up, I watched it. It looked like he could have been sleeping when his arm's up because I did have his arm, his shoulders kind of pinned up like that. Um, I can't really apologize. I wish I could apologize to all the fans who wanted to either see me get my hand raised, see me walk off with an L, or just wanted to watch me fight in general. Like I, I, I apologize to all those fans. That, uh, you know, it, that's a tough one to swallow. And I'm just grateful for the UFC that I even have the opportunity to to go try something like that. You know, what was Ronnie ranked? 38th in the world, 38th in the world, all platforms. And I just went in there, and that was the most focused I've ever felt in my life. I felt amazing. I, it just. Uh, it's tough when things don't go your way. And I had so many plans for myself this year. And that was the first hurdle and someone took it from me. That's, that hurts. Do you feel like there should be a change in the rules in, in the sense that maybe they look at the replay, realize they made a mistake and just restart the fight? I would have liked that. Keep everyone out of the cage. Keep everyone out of the cage. Don't let any coaches come in. Don't let anything happen. Put us back in that guillotine. He would have been sleeping in two minutes. You already mentioned you know you can't blame the referee, but would you be hesitant if he was going to ref your next fight? No. He doesn't want to make that mistake twice. I, I would trust him. What about your opponent? Did you guys speak? Did, you know, you said you'd want to run it back. <laughs> he, he walked. He walked straight up to me and said, fuck you, man. <laughs> I'm just kinda, I just laughed right away. I'm like, yo, either way you were going to go to sleep. If you weren't going to tap, you were going to bed. I was finishing that choke. You can ask the couple, the hundred of my training partners. I'm, you know, shout out to Professor, Professor Delmonica. You know, I... The confidence I have on the mat is ridiculous, and I think, I don't think Ronnie understood the level of grappling and wrestling that I bring to the table. I might not have the accolades that he's expecting to go against, but it's definitely a, a different level. I'm, you know, I'm forced to train with these guys at different levels, and that's the occasion I rose to today. And what's next? Does it have to be him again, or definitely, you... definitely? I, I need him again. I need to, I need to close that envelope. Like I said, that, that was what sixteen weeks. How many months is that? Four months. Four months about this date. About eight weeks, nine weeks of having Ronnie live rent-free in my brain, doing everything correct. Look, I didn't even have a, a panic attack this camp. I have all my hair still. 
I did the weight properly. I, you know, shout out to my girlfriend, Alejandra. She really held it down for me. This whole camp made sure I needed everything when I was in California. By the time I got to New Mexico, it was, you know, it's her home there. I just wish she was with me when I was in that, that last bit of camp. You know, it, it uh, I, I don't know, I really felt some sort of cause for this fight. That was the worst thing that could have ever happened. I, I didn't plan for that. I expected everything but that. I expected if I was gonna lose, I would be bloodied and battered and on my back and fucked up. And I knew if I was gonna win, I was gonna be the happiest man in the world tonight. I didn't expect that. So when he said F you, was he being angry or was it just more like a respect, like, hey, we just shared a crazy moment in there? I, I think it was more like that because it was before the no contest happened. It, it wasn't out of anger. Me and Ronnie have been following each other on social media for years now. He's a nice dude, you know, has a nice family, great guy. Uh, tonight was supposed to be my night. And as all that sort of confusion is happening there in the cage immediately after, did you understand what was going on at that time? Did they kind of fill you in? No. You saw the guys off to the side? No, I, once, once they started talking, that's when I was kind of like, I was like, wait, what? He was, Alex, get over here. Let me choke your ass out and show you how it feels. I'm not kidding. Someone, someone's got to lose. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, I was confused because that's my shit right there. That's my shit. We all know it's my shit. And for that to happen, it was, like I said, that was the last thing that I expected. It was garbage, man. Garbage. I just, like I said, I'm, I'm just grateful for the UFC. Like, to even give me these opportunities, man, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. But I work my ass off. I, I earn that luck. I work my ass off, you know, and it's, it takes a big team. It takes a village of people to get me on weight, to put me through the camps, to house me, to make sure that I'm at training every single day, five minutes late, maybe 10 minutes late. But every single day, I'm at three to five trainings a day. You know, it, it took time. It took a lot of people. And I, I just hope that it, you know, something fair comes out of it because I, I do appreciate it. I do want to fight again. I do want to give the people what they want. I know you said that he was, you could tell that he had his hand raised up, you know, at that point where, you know, he was sort of... Oh, just, yeah, his like, arm was could stuck. You, could you hear, was Peterson saying anything to him that you could hear that was maybe any sort of commands that you, that you didn't hear him responding that can maybe make him... No, but even, even if his jaw was crushed, his jaw was kind of crushed like this, you're not getting a word out. If, if he was getting a word out, I'm doing the choke wrong. I guess the last thing for me, and I know you've been appreciative of the opportunity, but has the UFC reached out to you guys? I know a lot of people are wondering, it was, a, it was no fault for you, it was no, no. fault for Ronnie. Have Chill you, out. Have you anything about show money? Chill, it happened like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. They still could reach wait, out to you right after. Wait, no, no one messaged me yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I uh, like I said, I, I do things the right way. Um, I appreciate the opportunities that, you know, I, I would like to fulfill what we said, which is, you know, my four fight contract. My goal was, I, I want to go through these contracts at 135. Let's do the math. That's three, three months, fight every three months at 135. I could do that. That's my job. It's my full-time job. I can do that. Um, that would be awesome. And it, you know, it's gonna take time and I hope, I just hope they can fulfill that. I hope they can fulfill that, you know, give me that fight again, I'll take it. When it comes to my pay, like, I just hope that people understand, like, it, it, it's more, it affects more than just me and uh, if they don't get it, that's okay. I, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna do things correctly. I'm gonna continue doing things the right way. Literally the last three months, I took a five minute ice cold shower every single day. Yesterday, about to go out to lunch after weigh-ins, and I was, I was waiting for the shower to heat up. I'm like, wait, damn you asshole, it's, you didn't even fight yet. Turned it on cold. 
you know, just stuff like that. You know, I'm, I run on a trail. I run on the right side of the trail the whole time to remind myself I'm doing things the right way. I, I go through a door, I open the right handle just to remind myself I'm doing things the right way. I'm, I'm sick like that. I, that's how I think. That's how I know it's going to get done. And I'm going to continue to do that. And I hope because I do these things the right way that, that I'll, you know, that the right will happen to me. Definitely. And I think that's a, that's a wonderful mindset. Hopefully they'll take care of you. Fight in the, in the meantime, are you willing to pick up anything? Hey. Uh, I don't really know. I, I, I want Ronnie next. I want, you know, I, I got to shut that down. Like I said, within three months, you know, no longer than three months. If I can stay ahead of schedule and do it sooner, great. But, yeah, hopefully, hopefully within three. Dan? Alex, what do you want, man? Um, it was your long, long-awaited Bantamweight debut. I'm sorry. <laughs> how uh, how'd you feel in there? How was the process? Like, it, it was it was it was highly anticipated because that's it was fantastic. <laughs> that, that's what got you in the USC was your bantamweight. So and and your first two were at featherweight. So how'd your how'd you feel at bantamweight? I felt great, man. I I was so happy going in there. I was nervous that I was happy. I, I looked at at Cub and Coach Anthony and Coach Diori, and I looked at them and I, I was like, yo, this is weird. I'm not as angry and crazy. I was like, I finally feel like I'm just in the moment. Like I, like I said, I'm, I did everything the right way. I did everything correctly. Like, this is weird. Am, am I supposed to feel like that? And I guess I wasn't supposed to feel like that next time. Maybe if I'm crazy again, I can get my hand raised. I'm just kidding, Keith. That one's to you. Uh, no, it, it was a, a great camp, man. I, it was a great year for me. You know, it's been 12 months and two weeks since my UFC debut. And I already got three in there, so I'm like, I'm happy with it. I, uh, I'm just happy for, you know, the, the process in general. I'm, uh, like I said, I grew up to the point where I'm doing things the right way. Everything I do, and you know, I take, you know, I take this job very seriously. And what I mean that by that is like, with my coaches, you know, they're they're my lifeline. My training partners are my lifeline. My girlfriend, my lifeline. All these people, you know, and for me to go out there and that happen, it's like, oh man, I'm really sorry, guys. Like I. I tried to do things the right way. I tried. Thanks, man. Dan, I mean, you're an ultimate fighter contestant, LFA champion, and now obviously today didn't go your way, but you showed a great showing today. All the way through your career, what's like a big takeaway you've had that you could really shine onto other people hoping to be in your shoes one day? That there's light at the end of the tunnel, man. No matter how hard things get, no matter how difficult, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And that, like I said earlier, that's, that's why I stay, come out here with this hat on. Because I know at the end of the day, I, you know, I know what I'm supposed to be doing in my life. I know how to do it correctly. And I'm going to continue to strive for that. And it's scary. You know, when things are worth it, when things are... When you really want something, a goal, it's supposed to be scary. Feels easy. Everyone would, everyone would have a gold strap. Everyone would, everyone would be driving Lamborghinis. Everyone would be having all these luxuries and all these accolades. But it's scary. It's hard, and I get it. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Put your shoes on. Go outside. Get some sun. Touch a tree. Go run. Go cry, go yell, go scream, laugh, whatever. Just get it all out and keep going. Keep going forward because there is what at the end of the tunnel? What's at the end of the tunnel? Light. Oh, thank you. Thank you.